Aside from the dearth of power, every kicks is saddled with a CVT. That means there's no option to roll your gears and make it at least feel a little quicker. And with so little power and torque, you can bet that any time you want to go faster, the CVT will keep the engine screaming at a steady 5000 revolutions per minute to get you up to speed. Finally, there's no all-wheel drive option either, so the kicks doesn't even have the bare minimum poor weather advantage implied by the crossover shape. One final insult to the Juke's legacy is the kicks design. While the kicks doesn't actually look bad, it's a thoroughly conservative crossover. Gone are the bug-eyed headlights, extreme curves and motorcycle-inspired center console. Instead, it has a me to black contrasting roof conventional hard line, a generic dashboard and Nissan's corporate grille. Though this look is arguably easier for customers to stomach, this is a segment that has thrived on funky looks. Just look at the Kia Soul, Toyota CHR, Jeep Renegade and the new Hyundai Kona. The Kona in particular is worth highlighting as it's one of the more distinctive subcompact crossovers. It offers two engines that outpower the kicks, and it has available all-wheel drive. Now we do have to concede, there are actually two small areas where the Kix is slightly better than the Juke. First is fuel economy. The Kix is expected to get 33 miles per gallon combined, which is far more than the most efficient Juke. Second is price. The Kix is said to start at under 